next chapter, air and combustion. Now, as you may already know, we live in an ocean of air, the atmosphere. This largely transparent part of our environment reveals itself when it starts to move, shaking the trees and blowing away materials. Air, of course, plays an important role in life. The chemistry of air is fully integrated into the chemistry of life. Oxygen and carbon-4 oxide flow between plants and animals, packaging and releasing energy from the sun. As we said before, air is a mixture of various gases, water vapor and dust particles. The approximate composition of air is about 78.08% nitrogen, 20.95% oxygen, 0.93% argon, 0.04% carbon-4 oxide, and between 0 to 4% water vapor. The amount of these gases may vary from place to place depending on seasons, altitude, and human activities. For instance, the amount of carbon-4 oxide and dust is higher in cities and industrial areas than in forested places. Combustion Humans do a lot of burning. We burn wood. We burn fossil fuels, coal, petrol, and natural gas. And sometimes we burn hydrogen. In all these burnings, the substances that burn combine with oxygen to release energy, usually heat and light. Reactions of this type are called combustion reactions. But energy is not the only product of combustion reactions. For example, when we burn coal, we produce carbon-4 oxide as well as energy. And when we burn hydrogen, we get water as well as energy. In both of these, the chemical products are gases that are released into the atmosphere. Some combustion reactions are very fast. If you mix hydrogen and oxygen gases before setting them alight, the reaction occurs in a split second. We call it an explosion rather than burning. And it's the same inside the car engine. The fuel is mixed with air in the cylinder and explodes with a spark from the plug. But put the same gas in a cooking stove and it burns. It is the same combustion reaction, just happening at different rates. Combustion reactions are very important to humankind. We use them to keep warm, to heat water, to cook, to move cars, ships and planes, for manufacturing and to produce electricity. In this chapter, we shall focus on the oxygen part of the air. When we say that oxygen constitutes about 21% of the air, it is not a theory. We can be able to experimentally determine this percentage. Oxygen is the only part of air that supports combustion. When a candle is lit and left exposed, it continues to burn due to adequate supply of oxygen from the surrounding air. But if the candle is covered with a glass, it goes off after a brief moment, and that's because the oxygen within the glass is depleted. Let us perform an experiment to determine the proportion of air that is used up when copper is heated in a fixed volume of air. Now, when brown solid copper is heated, it combines with oxygen to form a black copper 2 oxide. It is this oxygen that combines with the copper that we will measure using syringes. We set up the experiment like this. We light the Bunsen burner and heat the tube with the copper powder inside. We then start moving the syringe to and fro about 50 times to pass air over the heated copper. We continue the heating and moving. All the air has to move over the hot copper so that the oxygen in the air can combine with copper to form copper 2 oxide. 
at some point, there would be no further change in the amount of air in the syringe. At this point, there will be some brown copper that has not reacted because the oxygen is depleted. We collect our data and do the calculations. The original volume of air was 100 cubic centimeters. The final volume is 80 cubic centimeters. So the volume of air that has been used is 100 minus 80, which is 20 cubic centimeters. We calculate this percentage. 20 over 100 times 100 gives us 20%, which is a good approximation. When substances burn or react with oxygen, we call it oxidation. So copper metal is oxidized to copper to oxide. Combustion reactions are also oxidation reactions. Oxidation or the addition of oxygen to a substance does not necessarily have to occur when heating is involved. For example, over a period of time, oxygen will combine with iron producing rust. The ugly reddish brown color on this roof is rust. It is a form of iron oxide. It is an oxidation process that occurs slowly without any heating involved. We can also use the chemistry of rust to establish the percentage of oxygen in air. We need some steel wool which contains iron, also a plastic test tube and a container of water. The process is simple. We place a damp iron wool at the bottom of the test tube. We overturn the test tube into the water container. The oxygen in the tube will react with the iron wool forming iron oxide, rust. This removes the oxygen from the air in the tube. The volume of the used up oxygen is taken up by water which rises in the tube. When the process is finished, the added volume of water in the tube equals to the volume of the removed oxygen. Let's set up the experiment now. These plastic tubes are calibrated in milliliters. We made a hole at the 10 milliliter mark. This is the starting volume of air. Water will enter the tube up to this point. A hole in the cup allows water through the base.